Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes. Welcome to this sixth video in my series about getting started with Doric OSE, Steinberg's free music notation software. We've been putting together a song and it's starting to come together. In this video, we're going to look at some of the powerful editing and arranging tools that Doric OSE has to offer. Before we dive back into our project, I would like to show you the basic note editing tools that are crucial to working quickly in Dorico. We've already seen how you can drag selected notes to modify their pitch. You can also drag selections to new rhythmic positions. You can do all of this using the computer keyboard as well. Use the arrow keys on their own to navigate around the music and hold down Alt or Option when using the arrow keys to move the selection, either vertically by pitch or horizontally by time. Control and Alt, that's Command plus Option on Mac, with the up and down arrow keys, changes the pitch by an octave. Shift, Alt and the up and down arrow keys moves the pitch chromatically. You can also change the duration of selected notes by holding down Shift and Alt while using the left and right arrow keys. Back to our project, and let's take this to a finished piece of work. Since the last video, I've recorded a new piano part that's more chord-based, as well as adding a bass line. Dorico SE allows you to add up to eight players and instruments, which means you have a huge amount of flexibility with your projects. If you do need more instruments, you can easily upgrade to Dorico Elements for unlimited players. We started our project by using a template for solo piano, which doesn't show staff labels by default, as is typical for solo instrumental music. As we have added a few more instruments, we now need to show those labels. Open Layout Options and choose Staves and Systems. Choose to display full staff labels on the first system and abbreviated staff labels after that. We might also wish to change the bracketing for our ensemble. And let's try setting the orientation of the page to landscape rather than portrait. Apply and close the dialog to see the changes. Let's add some dynamics and phrasing. Selecting a note and clicking the slur button creates a slur to the following note. The ends of the slurs can be dragged to different notes. If I select a range of notes and press the slur button, the slur is created across the selection. A quick way to select a run of beamed notes is to click the beam itself. The key command for creating a slur is S. We've seen how we can use the notation panels in an earlier video, and we can work in the same way to add dynamics. If we make a selection across a range of notes, then creating music items that have a duration, such as a hairpin, will span that selection. And if I leave that hairpin selected, when I press the forte button, it is added at the end of the crescendo in exactly the right place. However, let me introduce you to popovers that can make creating music items much quicker. I've already said how I prefer to input music using my computer keyboard rather than the mouse. And part of the reason why is that you can actually create almost every type of music item using the keyboard. Every category of music notation has its own popover used for creating items in the score. Popovers are opened when there is a selection in the music and you press Shift plus a letter. Generally speaking, the first letter of that notation. For example, Shift K opens the key signatures popover. Type an uppercase letter to get a major key, or a lowercase letter to get the minor key. Use the hash symbol for a sharp, and a lowercase b for a flat. Shift T opens the tempo popover. Start to type a common tempo marking and select it from the dropdown. As T is for tempo, 
we can't use it for time signatures. So we type shift M for meter. Try four slash four or six slash eight. Use a number after a comma for an upbeat. Shift D is for dynamics. See how you can input multiple items over a selection. You can input pretty much anything you think of this way. Look in the right menu to see what the key commands are for the various popovers. And then try typing what you're looking for. Dorico will generally understand what you mean. You can also switch the notation toolbox to open popovers. Dorico Pro has a feature for generating music from a selection of chord symbols with options for voicing and rhythms. But in this case, I have recorded a new part. Looking through it, I'd like these notes to be played in octaves. I can use the Note Tools popover to quickly add intervals to my selection. And to help with separating music into voices, using filters from the jump bar make complex selections a breeze. Incidentally, don't worry about mistakenly clearing a selection, as clicking undo will bring it straight back. I'd like to vary the tune of the verse the second time through, so I need to use first and second time bars. Switching to galley view allows you to see all the music without the interruptions of page breaks. This light gray bar running along the top of every system is the system track and it allows us to insert and delete time from anywhere in the music without affecting what comes before or after. Use Alt-T or the jump bar to show or hide it. Clicking or dragging across the system track highlights that region and displays some additional controls that allow you to delete the region, select all items in the region, or insert as many new bars as are highlighted. Creating first and second time bars is as easy as selecting the duration of the first time bar and using the button in the Repeat Structures panel. I'll repeat the music that should be the same both times through with the R key and add the modified vocal part for the second time bar. To copy the chord symbols to the second time bar, I will select one, then press Control Shift A, that's Command Shift A on Mac, to select more. The Select More command will look around to select more of the same item, in this case, chord symbols. First, it will select any more chord symbols in the same bar, and pressing it again will select all chord symbols across the system. Hold Alt or Option and click the rhythmic position you would like to paste them. Alt-click paste works for all music items. To complete the structure of the song, let's also add a Dalsenio marking. Input a senio item at the start of the verse, and now, during playback, when Dorico reaches the end of the flow, it will jump back to the senio marking and carry on. If there are notes that should be played or sung only the second time through, I can use the Properties panel to suppress playback for specific passes, make the notes Q-sized, and add brackets to the note heads. I can then add a second line of lyrics by pressing the down arrow in the popover and typing as usual. So that's a first look at some of the powerful tools Dorico SE has to edit and arrange your music, including adding performance markings and repeat endings and learning about popovers for creating all types of music items. Next time, we'll be looking at how to share your project so it can be performed. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button below and do leave a comment if you have any questions. I hope you'll join me soon for the next video. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.